This is the 1986 Havoc with its driver, Cross Country. Havoc, H-A-V-O-C, is an acronym that stands for Heavy Articulated Vehicle Ordnance Carrier. The Havoc and Cross Country were first introduced in 1986. They were also sold in 1987. They were discontinued in 1988. Let's look at the parts and the features of the Havoc, starting up at the front here with these two orange guns. In the front, we also have some headlight stickers and I think these are misplaced on my Havoc. I think these stickers should be down here. Then, of course, we do have this clear plastic canopy, this very large clear plastic canopy. Uh, to access that, to open it, uh, you have to kind of move uh, these guns, tilt them back uh, in order to tilt the canopy back to access the cockpit. Here's a look at the cockpit of the Havoc, and you can see it does have some fairly good detail in there. You have front and back treads. The back treads are larger than the front treads, and these are fake. They're fake treads. Uh, turning the vehicle over, you can see the wheels that it rolls on. Now, both the front and the back treads have these removable armor panels, and you can see some of the uh, the bogies inside there and the suspension system. Both the front and the back treads turn independently. The front treads can turn quite a bit more than the back treads can. Up at the top here, we have this hydraulic gun seat, and it's on these two support arms, one on each side, and that does move a bit. It can elevate with a bit of a ratcheting like that. Uh, and, of course, since it has a pivot point right here, it can pivot up and move right over the canopy. The gun seat has some impressive details. They're really not skimping on details here. There's a little joystick for the figure to hold on when he's operating the gun. When we move the top cannons out of the way, we can access the engine cover. Remove that. Uh, it's got a little bit of detail on there. Uh, remove the engine cover and you can see some engine detail. This is the engine detail. In the back we have these rear facing guns. They pivot independently. We have four orange missiles, two on each side. These missiles peg into the side of the vehicle on this sort of universal dumbbell peg here. Here in the back we have a standard G.I. Joe universal tow hook. All the way around the back here we have these troop carrying platforms and there are foot pegs. This out in the back here opens up to reveal a sub vehicle. It works better if you kind of move the cannons out of the way. You can open up this uh, shroud that's around the recon vehicle. Underneath it has two non-working fans and this whole fan assembly here kind of slides. It has a really fierce looking engine here in the back. It looks like a very powerful engine with exhaust pipes coming out the side. It has these orange guns on the side. This is what the inside of the Havoc looks like without the reconnaissance vehicle in there. Let's take a look at the driver cross country. He came with no accessories, so let's take a quick look at his articulation. He had the typical articulation for 1986 G.I. Joe action figures. That means he could turn his head from left to right like that. He could also look up and down. His uh, neck was on a ball joint. He could move his arm up at the shoulder about so far. He could swivel it all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep that allowed him to swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside so he could move at the torso a little bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his legs at the hip about 90 degrees and he could move at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Cross Country starting with his head. And on his head he has what looks like an American Civil War Confederate Army Kepi. On his chest is this green vest. It's got this sort of black hose thing that goes from this pocket here over to this red shoulder pad. Cross Country's arms feature white rolled up sleeves and this uh, very unusual sculpted feature here on both shoulders. On his waist piece he has some gray trousers, some pockets in the back, a brown belt uh, with it looks like a black patch and perhaps some bullets here and a belt buckle. On his legs he features those gray trousers and he has these teardrop shaped pockets here on the sides that have zippers on him. Then starting at the knees, his knees are white. And then he has uh, what looks like uh, white boot coverings with a red strap on them. This file card for Cross Country would have been printed on the back of the box that the Havoc came in. You were encouraged to cut these out and keep them. There's nothing on the other side. It's just the back of a box. It says his code name is Cross Country hyphenated. It says he's the Havoc driver. And then it doesn't say file name here as it normally does. It just says his name. Uh, his name is Robert M. Blade. 
Hercules. His primary military specialty is armor. Secondary military specialty is heavy equipment operator. His birthplace is Greensboro, North Carolina. This section says, Cross Country's father was a bulldozer operator and his mother drove a grader. You might say he was born to drive big yellow things that run on diesel. Coupled with his natural affinity for heavy machinery, his uncanny sense of direction and fearlessness under fire make him the man you want at the controls, whether you're riding into a hairy situation or trying to get out of one. Qualified expert with heavy laser cannon, M16A2, M250 caliber machine gun, and 45 auto pistol. This quote down here says, Crankcase might be a wild man behind the wheel of his awe striker, but cross country will steer that havoc of his across terrain that would break both axles of the RTV. In the G.I. Joe animated series, cross country made some appearances, and the havoc made a lot of appearances. Uh, the G.I. Joe team was depicted as having a lot of these vehicles, and they could be driven by anybody, not just cross country. In the G.I. Joe comic book series, cross country and the havoc were introduced in issue number 51.